Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today I want to talk about the 1992 MTV Video Music Awards and the incident that took place between Nirvana and Guns N' Roses. So before we can talk about the 1992 Video Music Awards, let's start first with the week before the Music Awards actually happened. So Guns N' Roses were on tour with Metallica and one of their stops was in Orlando, Florida and Axel who was already a little agitated with Nirvana because of some of the stuff that Kurt Cobain said in the press, uh, basically made his own rant against alternative bands and Kurt Cobain and his then wife, Courtney Love. Here's what he had to say. Oh, we've had our share of problems with so-called alternative bands. What is this word? I mean, I didn't find myself using it, alternative. Like someone who leads an alternative lifestyle. All I know is that when Guns N' Roses started, ain't no fucking radio stations wanted to play our shit either. Ain't no radio stations wanted to play Metallica. So I think we have the world's biggest alternative crowd here tonight. I think that the, the problem starts when uh, you start thinking that you're different from everybody else on the fucking planet. You may be a little different in what you're doing or how you're going about doing it, but I got a good feeling that you're probably a human. Right? You're probably a human being. And so right now, Alternative, only thing that means to me is someone like Kurt Cobain in Nirvana, who basically is a fucking junkie with a junkie wife. And if the baby's born deformed, I think they both ought to go to prison. That's my feeling. And he's too good and too cool to bring his rock and roll to you. Because the majority of you he doesn't like or want to play to or even have you like his music. It seems to be a general feeling among a lot of alternative bands that they don't want the majority of people even liking them. They, they like it on the outside. Now fast forward to about a week after the Orlando show that Guns N' Roses play with Metallica and they're now in Los Angeles at the MTV Video Music Awards where both Nirvana and Guns N' Roses will be performing. At the end of Nirvana's performance, you can see and hear Dave Grohl basically saying hi Axel over and over again, sort of taunting him because of the bad blood between both bands and the press. Here's the clip of that. Of course, everything you see on stage is not everything that's going on. I heard there was some tension. I gather from what was said on stage between Nirvana and Guns N' Roses tonight. What was going on? I think you were back there. Yeah, as you can imagine, there was a little tension backstage. I guess Chris Novoselic of Nirvana said, Hi, Axel, at the end. If you couldn't understand what he said at the end of the song, that's what he said. So when he came back to the dressing room, Axel was allegedly waiting there for him with a film crew and basically wanted to find out what he said about him. There seemed to be some prior tension before they actually arrived and it just seemed to build as they were here and now that the show's over I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. You never can tell with either Nirvana or Guns N' Roses as you can imagine. Let me try and recap that so so Chris Novoselic says hi Axel and Axel shows up at his trailer with a film crew and actually, what, a gun or something? No actually Axel in Florida apparently said something about Kurt and Courtney something derogatory about Kurt and Courtney so when they came here Courtney then accosted Axel and it went on from there. I see. Probably something that'll blow over, I have a feeling. You never know. The commercial winds will blow it over. Oh, okay, that's it from the uh, ninth Annual Video Music Award. So immediately following the MTV VMAs, a couple days later, uh, Nirvana would be in Oregon playing a political concert 
for a ballot measure called Ballot Measure 9. So they played a concert called No on 9. Now, for those who don't know, this was a, um, a vote that was going to be happening by the voters in Oregon uh, concerning gay rights. And Measure 9 would have added the following text to Oregon's constitution, saying all governments in Oregon may not use their monies or properties to promote or encourage or facilitate homosexuality, pedophilia, sadism, and masochism. And uh, this is something that Nirvana was strongly against. In the end, uh, a majority of people ended up voting no, 57% to about 43%. And here's what Kurt had to say during the concert about what happened at the VMAs with Guns N' Roses. You know, yesterday, um, my wife and I were sitting in a tent at the MTV Music Awards. And we're, having, we're having lunch. And Axl Rose walked by us. And, and we yelled at Axl. We said, Axl! Will you be the godfather of our child? And he said, he stopped, he turned around, he pointed his finger at my with wife. With his bodyguard? Said, yeah, well, he had like 20 bodyguards with him. And, and he's doing the, uh, the Madonna documentary. He's got his little film camera with him. And, and you had a three-week-old baby in your arms. And I had a little helpless child in my arms. And so he said to my wife, you better shut up, bitch. Don't pitch me any shit tonight. Because tonight was obviously the highlight of his career. Look at see the last night. Was. He said so. And, and then I said, and then he said, and then he looked at me and he said, "You better keep your wife shut, or I'm going to take you to the pavement." And I, I was shaking and I, was, I went, "What? What? You're gonna? What are you gonna do? You're gonna beat me up?" And he said. You better keep your wife's mouth shut. You embarrass everybody. You embarrass your wife, you embarrass your old man, you embarrass me. And, and, and then I, I was shaking and I said, I told my wife to shut up, bitch. <laughs> True story, you heard it here first, and, and so. And then I ran into Duff McKagan. And that guy wanted to fight me. And he had three bodyguards who were like pushing me around. But it's about, but see, that's the establishment rock and roll. See, what? they want you to buy their package rebellion of sitting on a Harley Davidson while you play uh, uh, piano with a 41-piece orchestra, just like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer did in 1978. Say it, brother. Hey, man. I'm not sticking up for Axel or anything, <laughs> but I'm not going to stick up for Kurt, man. Well, you got to take sides. Either you're no. yes on nine no, or you're wait. no on nine, man. You got to take yeah. sides. No on nine, but I'm talking about Axel here. Just hang on a second. You're talking about an asshole? <laughs> I think you guys should let music be music, man. Let everybody express what they want, man. Yeah. Be it hard rock, be it Nirvana, right be on, it man. anyone, man. Just let them rock the way they want to rock. Yeah, okay? right, right on, man. But all right, that's a corporate establishment. Which but is you can't really let a rock star who obviously likes to beat women and likes to control women and who likes to tell women to shut up and who hates niggers and people. He is a racist and a homophobe. He doesn't have the right to speak his mind. Well, he does have the right to speak his mind, no. but so do we, and he should I'm be shut up. I'm not sticking up for him, man. And then later in 1993, Kurt Cobain gave an interview where he talked about the VMAs again, and he talked about how he intentionally spit on what he thought was Axl Rose's keyboard. Now, there was an article published uh, not too long ago where they interviewed a lot of people who were friends with the guys from Nirvana, as well as uh, some people who were the correspondents from MTV of what really happened backstage. So it turned out that Kurt Cobain had actually spit on Elton John's keyboard, who would actually perform with Guns N' Roses on the song November Rain. And Kurt was horrified once he actually found that out. So that was according to his friend Ernie Bailey, who was actually Nirvana's guitar tech. If we didn't play Team Spirit, and we ended up playing with him. And I, I spit on Axel's keyboards right before, um, right, <laughs> because this this stage, you know, we were sitting on the stage that, that really brought adult. us up. And, <laughs> <laughs> it was either that or beat him up. <laughs> but his, you know, I, we were down on this platform which brought us up hydraulically, you know, on the stage. 
and and I saw his piano there, and I just thought, oh, I have to take this opportunity. And I spit <laughs> big goobers all over his keyboards. I hope he I hope he didn't get it off in time. It's kind of great though. That's what that's what should happen in pop music. Band spitting things. It's really fun. You see that yeah. happens in England all the time. Yeah, and it's really good. English people are great at it. <laughs> they're, they're masters at it. I mean, God, it's so entertaining. <laughs> So everybody's familiar with the confrontation that happened backstage between Axel and Kurt, but maybe what a lot of people don't know is what happened between Duff McKagan and um, Chris Novoselic from Nirvana. So Duff McKagan, who was intoxicated according to a lot of people, and Chris Novoselic was also under the influence, Chris told the story of how he was walking towards the stage and came across Duff McKagan. He said, I think Duff was also under the influence. He must have heard something from Rose and had a terse word for me. So according to Duff McKagan, he said, I blew my lid when I perceived a slander toward my band from the Nirvana camp and my drunken haze and drug-induced mania. I heard what I wanted to hear. I went after Chris Novoselic backstage. I was mad and insane then. My scope of dealing with any sort of conflict had narrowed down to bar room brawling. According to Novoselic, he said that Duff wanted to fight me and he had about three bodyguards who were like pushing me around. I was already a little bent out of shape and instantly replied with the same sentiment. The production people grabbed me and continued me towards the stage. Now, according to one of the witnesses who was there, uh, there was a trailer that uh, Kurt and Courtney and their nanny were in along with their baby. And she said, when I got to the trailer, I found Duff McKagan and Gilby Clark and other members of Guns N' Roses trying to tip it over. Axel was there, but did not physically have his hands on the trailer. They didn't know Francis was in there referring to Kurt's uh, child. So I totally freaked out on them and called security. As soon as they realized Francis was in there, they stopped. It was just their idea of a joke. They just didn't know. So according to Duff McKagan, uh, the day after the MTV VMAs, he said that Kim Fastback Warwick, his mentor, had called him the day after his embarrassment and scolded him for it. He said, I felt so low. We had so, so many things in common. We had so many things in common today. Also, according to MTV VJ at the time, Tabitha Soren, uh, Axel's girlfriend then, Stephanie Seymour, looked visibly shaken after the altercation with Kurt Cobain. And even Courtney Love and Stephanie Seymour had a bit of an exchange backstage. So Stephanie Seymour asked Courtney Love if she was a supermodel, to which Courtney Love responded, are you a brain surgeon? So people were probably wondering what happened next. So the following day after the VMAs, a hastily convened press conference, the members of Nirvana revealed their side of the story, while Guns N' Roses maintained a tactful silence. So some years later, Slash revealed that he had not taken part in any of the VMA feuds, declaring that I was like, I don't have time for this shit. And of course, Chris Novoselic and Duff McKagan became, made a very public reconciliation in 2008 when both were writing blogs for Seattle Weekly. And then since that time, it seems like that rift that happened between the Nirvana and Guns N' Roses camp has now been fixed. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, do you remember the 1992 VMAs? What were your thoughts? Put those down in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the like button and also be sure to subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. You guys can also go follow us on t Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also go support us on uh, Patreon if you want to see us making more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and have yourself a good day.